Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, we will add animation to this floating contact form that we designed in the previous video. Now, if you haven't watched that video, I will leave the link in the description of this video. You can go ahead and watch it. And let me show you the animation that we're going to add. So first of all, we're going to add the animation to this placeholder. Now, if I click on this input field, we can see that we have this animation for this placeholder. We have the same animation for all these placeholders. And then the next animation that we're going to add is for this button right here. So if I click on this button, we can see that the contact form goes away. And if I click on this button once again, it comes back. So we need to add this animation as well. So let's get started. Now what we will do over here is that we're going to add a class to this label. And when we have that class, then we're going to add this state over here. So we'll add a class called active and when we have the active class, then the label will have these styles. And if you don't have the active class, then the label will have the current style. Now just for testing, I'll just add a class called active to this first label over here. So I'll just type class equals active. And let's go to our style.css file and if we scroll up, we can see these are the styles for the label. So here we will type floating contact form field container label dot active and make sure that you don't have any space between label and active all right first of all let's set the font size of the label to 13 pixels and now we can see for the first label we have a font size of 13 pixels all right let's set the background color to ef233c and we'll set the color of the text to white and we will add a padding of 2 pixels top and bottom and 16 pixels left and right Right now let's set the top position to negative 8 pixels and we'll set the left position to 16 pixels and we'll also add a white border to the left and to the right of this label so that we have some separation between this line and this label so I'll just type border left and I'll just set it to 8 pixels solid and white and I'll do the same for border right so I'll just duplicate it and here I'll just type border right. And I think we can move it a little bit to the right. So I'll just set this to left 20 pixels or maybe 24 pixels. But that looks all right. And we'll also set the font weight to bold. All right, that's it with the styles for the active label. And we'll also add a transition so that we will have smooth animation between the two classes. So I'll just type all to 300 milliseconds ease. And now if we go back to our HTML and if I just remove this active class from here and if I add it to the second label, we can see that we have the styles for the second label. Now we're going to add and remove the classes using JavaScript. All right, now the next thing we will do is we will add an active class to this form container. So let's go back to our style.css file and by default we want to hide this contact form. And when we click on this button, we need to display this contact form. So let's go to the top and uh, here we have the styles for the contact form. So we have these styles over here for the form container. Now by default we will add a rotation. So let's type transform, rotate Z and we'll set the angle to negative 6 degrees. Now we want this element to rotate from this bottom right corner. So we have to set the transform origin to this bottom right corner. So here we'll just type transform origin and I'll just set it to bottom right. Now we also need to hide this form container. So let's type opacity and we'll just set it to zero. And now if you hover over this area, we can see that uh, we can still click on the input fields and even on the send button. So we also have to set the pointer events to none. So let's type pointer events none. And now we cannot click on any of these elements. And we'll also add a transition so that we will have smooth animation. I'll just set all to 500 milliseconds ease. All right, now let's add the styles for the active class. So let's type floating contact form, form container dot active. And here we need to reset all these elements. So let's type transform rotate Z and I'll just set it to zero degrees. And we'll just set the opacity back to one and pointer events back to auto and now if you go back to our index.html file and if we just add an active class over here 
we can see that the contact form is displayed over here but by default when we don't have the active class the contact form is not displayed all right now let's add and remove the active classes using javascript when we click on this button over here so we need to reference some of these elements in our javascript we need to reference this form container because we need to add the active class and we also need to reference this contact icon because when we click on this icon we need to add the class and then we also need to reference all these input fields from here because when we click on the input field we want to add the active class to the label so for all these input fields i'll just add a class called form input i'll just paste this in all the input fields so i'll just paste it over here and even for the text area all right now let's reference all of these elements in our javascript we have already linked our javascript file over here so let's go to our main.js file and let's type const form inputs and i'll just set it to document dot query selector all and here we'll just type floating contact form form container and in that we have the form input now since we are using query selector all we're going to get multiple form inputs and uh, we're going to store that inside this form inputs constant and now let's also reference the contact button so let's type contact and i think it is called contact icon so i'll just type contact icon over here equals document dot query selector and here we just type floating contact form contact icon and then lastly we need to reference the form container so let's type const form container equals document dot query selector floating contact form form container now let's add an event listener to this contact icon so let's type contact icon dot add event listener and we will listen for the click event and here i'll just create an arrow function now here we need to add and remove the active class from the form container so let's type form container dot class list dot toggle and here we'll just type active now what this does is that if you have the active class inside the form container then it will remove it and if you don't have the active class then it will add it so that's why we are using toggle over here and i just noticed that we have a typo over here it should be floating and i'll just type t over here all right now let's go to our design and let's click on this contact button and we can see that our contact form is being displayed over here now let's click on this button once again and we can see that the contact form disappears so the animation for this contact icon is working all right now let's add the animation for these placeholders and i just noticed that we don't have this cursor being displayed over here when we hover over this label so let's go back to our css and uh, let's go to the label and uh, for the label i'll just type pointer events and we'll just set it to none and now we have the correct cursor all right so let's go back to our main.js file and uh, here we have multiple form inputs and uh, we have stored them inside this constant called form inputs and i have a typo over here we need to have form inputs so what we're going to do is we're going to use a for each loop and we're going to loop through all the form inputs and we're going to add event listeners to all of them so let's type form inputs dot for each and here we need to have a callback function now for the argument i'll just type i for the input fields you can name this variable anything you want and we'll just create an arrow function over here and here we'll just type i dot add event listener so this will add event listeners to all the form inputs inside this uh, constant now for the event i'll just type focus because uh, when we click on this uh, input field the focus event is going to be triggered so let's create an arrow function over here now we need to add the active class to the label not to this uh, input field so if we go back to our index.html file here we can see we have the input field and uh, before that we have this label and it's the same with all the other input fields here we can see we have this input field and the previous element is the label and even for the text area we can see that the previous element is the label so let's go back to our javascript and we need to select the previous element of this i so let's type i dot previous element sibling now this property in javascript will help us access the previous element so let's type dot class list dot add and we're going to add a class called active so what we are doing over here is that we are accessing the previous element of the input field and we are adding the class active to that 
So let's test it out. Let's click on this input field. And now we can see we have the active class to this label. And we have the active class to all the labels. Now when we go outside this input field, we need to remove this active class from the label. So for that, I'll just copy this code from here. And I'll just paste it down here. And here instead of focus, I'll just type blur. And here instead of adding, we'll just remove the active class. And let's test it out. Let's click over here and we can see we have the active class. And if we click somewhere else, the active class is removed from that input field. Now the last thing we need to do is when we have some data inside our input field, we need to keep the active class. So for that we will add an if condition over here. So here before removing the active class, we're going to add an if condition. So I'll just type if i dot value equals blank. So if the value inside the input field is blank, then we're going to remove the active class or else we're going to keep it. So let's test it out and let's type some value over here. And now we can see that the active class stays for the label when we have some data inside the input field. And if you don't have any data, then the active class is removed. So that's basically it with the animation of our contact form. And that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.